What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Boleros. We're back again with an emergency podcast. Welcome back, Gab and Maui. Yeah, semi-emergency podcast. Medyo, medyo. Uh, it's not good news if you're an Ateneo fan or an Adamson fan, but we have to talk about it. Uh, both teams losing a few key players to their upcoming roster in season 86. So we're going to talk first about Ateneo, not because we're homers, but I think we can all agree it's probably the bigger loss for for, for both teams, right? Because, you know, we all know Fortsky is not playing in season 86. He was a mythical five member in Ateneo last season, was the leading point guard uh, a lot of times during last season, we were talking about it. Every time Fortsky sat down, the offense was a mess. So I, I think I think Fortsky is a bigger loss to Ateneo than, let's say, the other key players that Adamson is losing. But we'll talk about them later. So first of all, I know Atinista kayong dalawa. So I just want to check up on you. How are you? How are you? How are you feeling? <laughs> Go, Gab. How are you feeling? Uh, when the news came, well, well it was um, semi-shocking news. I've kind of, uh, we've kind of heard about this already a few weeks or months back, uh, but that was just rumors and speculation. Now it's confirmed by the, by our dear alma mater that yeah, Forty is not gonna be playing season eighty-six for me. Yung, uh, I wasn't. It's bittersweet. No, it's very bittersweet for me to hear this news. Uh, bitter, obviously, for Ski Patrigao was at times pro- you probably the best player you on the court for uh, for Ateneo. He was the he was the guy who steadied the ship a, a lot of the times. Up and whole of the first round when we were playing C- Chris Kuhn as our backup point guard. Fortsky was the one who really carried them to wins. And uh, it wasn't until that Gab Gomez established himself as a real um, dependable backup point guard that, you know, uh, Fortsky wasn't that much uh, relied upon to carry the offense. No, But yeah, it's bittersweet. Uh, of course, it's sakit, no? Uh This probably puts... UP more on top now than uh, than Ateneo. I mean, Ateneo has now lost four starters from last season. <laughs> uh, people, I think, are discounting that fact. Na, okay, uh, Dave, BJ, and, and Ange graduated. Now with Fortsky gone, Kai Balung is the only remaining starter. So everyone else is going to be new in the starting five next season. So that's a big, big adjustment. And I think that's why Coach Tab is just pouring so many games in, you, into this team, just letting them play a lot of the, a lot of tournaments. All, they're playing almost every day or, or every other day, just really to get a lot of experience for these guys because, you know, these guys have not played together since last season. Uh, sweet, because at least I know that Ateneo is still consistently <laughs> um, prioritizing, being, yeah, emphasizing the student emphasizing. before athlete. Yeah. Yes, diba? Uh Again, uh, they've been consistent. They've been doing this ever since, and not and not just in basketball. If if there any if there are any volleyball fans out there, um, when we were trying to get that three peat. Mi- Ateneo suspended Michelle Morente from the volleyball team. So it doesn't matter. Uh, when Coach Tab was going to his for first year, Ateneo kicked out seven highly touted recruits, including CJ Perez, diba? who was supposed to go into the Ateneo Blue Eagles lineup and just kicked them out of school. So at least uh, uh, this is all on... Fortsky, he should have paid more attention to his academic, should have worked harder. No, it's not just because you're a basketball player that you're uh, 
going to be given a different standard than other students. Uh, you're supposed to study. Uh, and I think he's made the commitment to Coach Tab, no, that he will focus on his studies and has committed to make his grades better. So hopefully, you know, by season 87, he's back in the roster. Uh, it's not easy <laughs> to be in Ateneo. <laughs> Uh, third year of Ena as well was well, we took a season off because of grades. Yung Rafi Verano, Joel Mendoza, there are countless of Ateneans who've gone through this. So at least consistent pa rin yung ano matter natin. I'm happy to <laughs> see that <laughs> that they're that they're still very strict about their grades. So yun lang, but you know, sakit pa rin. Sakit pa rin. Ang sakit pa rin. Na, na, na makawala si Portsky. Maui. Oh, yeah, uh, I think it's a big blow, pero tayo kasi off-air, we, we've talked about this for the past few weeks. And um, if you watched Ateneo sa preseason games, even in one of the first tournaments, yung mga fail oil, you, you wouldn't be surprised because they weren't playing, Portsky wasn't starting, he wasn't playing starter minutes. Nung una, parang, parang feeling lang namin, probably Coach Tab is trying to, to get a look at the other guards. But eventually, he started not playing at all and was not even part of some of the lineups. And if, if you tune into to social media of the Ateneo Blue Eagles, he, he also didn't join, I think, the Australia trip with the Ateneo. So I'm not surprised that he didn't make it. But yeah, to, to Gab's point, uh, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, Ateneo is going to lose four starters from last season. Imagine that big of a blow, losing... The best player in UAP the past few years, Ange Kwame, plus three key guys, Idelfonso, Pandigao, and Andrade. So it's definitely going to be a challenge for Ateneo, but, but if it's at, if it's Coach Tab, uh, I mean, Gab also mentioned when Coach Tab entered Ateneo, Ateneo lost seven players. Uh, Terry Ravena also had to sit out a year. And, and I think it proved that whatever lineup Coach Tab has, I mean, I've been very adamant since the start of this podcast in Coach Tab with Trust. Whoever is going to play... Next man up. Next man up, who, right, Mao? Yeah, next man up uh, from the BBOB. I mean, whoever is going to play, Ateneo is going to compete. But but, but it does really put a dent on Ateneo. And I think I agree with Gab. Uh, Ateneo and UP is probably in the top tier. But losing fourth would probably notch Ateneo down to a lower tier. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I, I guess it's it's a blessing in disguise that that the other guards are playing heavy minutes from the start of preseason. Imagine if this happened, I think, right now. If, imagine if Portsky was getting all the minutes and then Ateneo only found out that he wouldn't be able to play next year. And, and, uh, and I also am happy that Ateneo is still prioritizing that student-athlete uh, Mantra. I, I think um, Portsky is eligible to play for the UAAP based on the grade requirement, but he's not. He, he failed in Ateneo. And Ateneo still decided not to let him play. So that, that if I read it correctly, uh, I think that's that's the epitome of what Coach Tab is. It's not just about basketball. It's about really developing yourself. And I think you can see you can see why Coach Tab really develops these players, these young guys into men who really do good after after their stint in Coach Tab. Uh, some of the players, some of the role players have even started to, to do well sa pro careers nila. Even become, si Tyler Tio was not that of a star sa Ateneo, but he's really doing well in the PBA. And I think this is the way to go. I mean, you have to prioritize being a student athlete. We mentioned this in episodes before, uh, being... A student athlete, you have to be a student first before an athlete. So I agree with Ateneo's stance, but as Gab mentioned, it's really bittersweet. But at, at the end of the day, I'm still putting my trust in Coach Tab. Next man up mentality nga naman. So let's see. Okay, so uh, being an athlete in Ateneo, it's not for everyone. And to your point, you know, no one is above the law. I mean, Ford Ski is not as Gab mentioned, he's not. It's not the first time this has happened. Thirdy Ravenna, arguably, oh, so you know, the most nga, accomplished Ateneo player ever, I would say. 
also missed one season. So, so you know, if it happens to 30, it can happen to anyone. But you can always bounce back. Diba? See, 30 bounced back, uh, brought Ateneo to a few more championships as soon as he returned. So, uh, there's always a chance for you to bounce back. If you're serious about working on your grades and getting back into the It's team. all on Fortsky now. It's all on Fortsky. He has right, to right. study hard. If he wants to play for Ateneo, he has to do the work, not just on the court. Yep. It's that simple. Okay. So now let's let's focus more on Fortsky's contribution to the team. What will Ateneo miss the most in Fortsky in, in Fortsky Padrigao? Maui. I think a lot, you, a lot. A lot. But, but, <laughs> Maui. but Ayun si Gab Benson. You were Gab Benson this during the start. I think yung pagka-steady talaga ni Fortsky is one of the things that Ateneo will miss. He was the one that steered the ship. He was the one that uh, stabilized Ateneo during those hard times. And and even, he, he's an offensive option. He's not just a playmaker. He scores when, he, when he's needed. He, he does the playmaking. Ateneo will definitely miss a lot. But... Uh, at the end of the day, we, we have a ton of people naman, I think, to to offset. Coach Tab was interviewed about it. I think uh, I read an article so One Sports yata. I mean, the, the only thing he can do right now is he uh, trust the players on that he's going to be. And it's going to be uh, the other players will have to contribute. Kung baga, lahat, inaasahan na lang ni Coach Tab that everyone, everyone, all the three guards right now, Espinosa, Brown, and Pablo Nieto, will have to make up and si Gomez definitely more, mostly si Gomez and si Kun. we'll have to make up losing Fortsky because we're losing our top playmaker we're I guess it pays that we that Coach Tab experimented on Chris Kuhn to be a better playmaker right now right now we really need another playmaker and losing <laughs> and that experiment will definitely will pay off this season uh, I don't know if he had the foresight or it, it, he just wanted to develop Kuhn, but but it's gonna be a big thing that Ateneo developed Kuhn as another playmaker. So we'll see. Uh, right now, I think the point guard slot is up for grabs. I'm not sure who's gonna start. To be honest, I'm not sure if it's gonna be Gab Gomez, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna be another one of those guys. And if you watch Ateneo a lot this this preseason, they they usually play one or two of those from the four point guards. Because they really need playmaking. And I think that's going to be the case for most of next season because we just lost our best playmaker and probably top, potential top scorer next season. Gab, do you agree with Maui? Of course. Uh, but uh, for me also, this is a pinaka biggest skill in Fortsky is his understanding of Coach Tab system. If you've watched Ateneo games live or even on TV. You know he's always he's always talking with Coach Tab. And in nearly every play, he's talking with Coach Tab. And I think he understands the system better than anyone on the team. And that's why uh, he, he's the floor general. Just in his second year, he was tasked with run, running the offense for the Blue Eagles. And yeah, we're going to miss that. Uh Someone else has to be that guy, that second coach on the floor, uh, that coach on the floor. And Portsky was that in season 85. Someone will have to take on that role. Who it is, maybe that's going to be your next question, Sam. <laughs> Actually, lahat kayo, kayong dalawa, inuunahan nyo sa questions. Eh. So that was the next question. Wh- who's going to replace Portsky? The other question is, how does this affect Ateneo's chances? Uh, but you, you sort of mentioned it na you're ranking Ateneo lower against, let's say, UP. But yeah, let's move on to the next question. How does Who, who do you think will replace Fortsky? Or how does Ateneo replace the loss of what Fortsky can do for them? Mm. Sige. Gab. I think I'll, I'll go first. So uh, if you're basing all, it off of coach Stab's interviews. So it's going to be by committee, you know? It's going to be... Yep. Uh, from the preseason, I would say that the most consistent point guards that are being played are Ian Espinosa, Jared Brown, 
and Gab Gomez. Now, the favorite, of course, I think to a, a lot of fans out there, to a lot of uh, people who watch the UAAP, is going to be Gab Gomez. You now, he was the backup point guard. And actually, in the finals, I think he played more fourth quarter minutes than Fortsky because Fortsky cramped a lot <laughs> in the finals. <laughs> so, uh, the favorite is going to be Gab Gomez. Definitely, he's he has experience. He's proven himself on the biggest stage. Game, games two and three of the finals, he was there getting big minutes. And uh, I think you're going to see a, him play a lot of that role. But you, you don't be surprised if also, if Coach Tab just goes with the hot hand, maybe a Jared Brown or Ian Espinosa uh, take a bunch of minutes one game. And then the other game is going to be Gab Gomez. The other game is going to be Jared Brown. Uh, it's going to take the three of them to replace a guy like Forsky Padrigao. But uh, I act- from the preseason, uh, I actually like Jared Brown. I think Gab Gomez is better suited for a backup point guard role. You know, that guy who was steady the second unit, give a shooting option, uh, steady the ship. With the bench guys, I think Jaren Brown complements the other starters pretty well. I think he's a better shooter than Espinosa, and I think he's a better shooter than Gomez as well. He's a better ball handler, and young and he's calm. And right beside Chris Kuhn and maybe Akitevis in the starting lineup, uh, you, I, you, I can see him being pretty effective there. So I, I won't be surprised if Coach Tab goes that way. No, so for me to start, I think Jared Brown. Maui. If you were to ask me, actually, I would agree with you. I think it's gonna be Jared Brown. He's been very impressive in the preseason. And it's not nothing against Gab Gomez. I think uh Gab Gomez should be suited to second second uh lineup, second unit this season. Just because you want that continuity also for the second unit. Because you're it's going to be a big distortion for the first unit. So you don't know what's going to happen in the first unit. Because four play, as you mentioned, four out of the five players, starting players from Ateneo, has, is not going to play next year. So if you want that stability, you can put Gab Gomez in the second unit since he's already very comfortable playing as, as the sixth man from last season. Um, but yeah, I think see, Jared Brown has been very steady. Uh, I really like his outside shooting. Um and you st- measures yeah, your stability, but but if you want some more flash, some more scoring, and more aggression, I I wouldn't be surprised also if, if si Espinosa would get the starting lineup. And if you watch the preseason ng Ateneo, you you would be surprised. I mean, it's been a very roller coaster ride that point guard slot. Uh, from game to game, it's been different. Some games Espinosa starts, some games Jared Brown starts, some games Gomez starts. So it, I think Gab. Gab mentioned this Kanina. It probably is gonna be like that next season. Uh probably in the first round that they will experiment. Then when Coach Tab gets that starting lineup, it's gonna be the same lineup for the rest of the season. Um but we have two months, so let's see how, how they fare in the next two months. Probably they'll probably lock their slots in the next two months. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get staggering minutes from all the different guards. We also have Nieto also has, who has performed well this offseason. But but I think Nieto is more suited as an off-guard uh, shooter. Yeah, shooting shooter. guard. Yeah, more of a shooting guard, uh, corner, three-point specialist. But but let's see. I, I Right now, it's really a coin toss who will, who will probably start next season. Oh, hey. So, I, 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 I'm a bit surprised. I thought you the two of you would pick uh, Gab Gomez, but you know, Jared Brown is up there also. I agree. I would have picked Gab Gomez only because I, I think Gab, you mentioned it already. He has he's proven himself uh in the biggest stage in the UAAP. He played a lot of minutes in the finals against UP's pressure de- defense, uh playing against their top guards. Uh Maui, I think you mentioned it earlier. Probably for me, the biggest loss for Ateneo, when it comes to Fortsky, is his steady hands. Uh, his steady hands, his veteran leadership. Uh, it's really just different when it's the UAAP environment. So at, at least for me, the safe pick is 
um Gab, uh, Gab Gomez. Gomez but but it's, uh, it's not like against Jared Gab, Brown yung, yung, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Gab, yung Gab Gomez ha? I mean, no, no, he no, might come off the bench, but I, I I think he will finish games for at the Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think man, I, man, I would man. agree. Probably would get man, bulk man. of the minutes. Yeah, and I think see, Jared Brown is, he's not a rookie rookie. He's not young, <laughs> diba? So he actually is a veteran. Like, this guy has experience and he's he's a, a bit older uh, as a rookie. So I think he's gonna, he's not gonna be. He's, he's going to be stable, I think. Um, let's just see how he plays against uh, the UAA when it comes to the UAAP environment. Uh, Maui, you mentioned Espinosa and Nieto. Um, you know, I remember distinctly when Matt Nieto was a rookie, I think we he was supposedly like a third string point guard or something and then just came out of nowhere. Um, sino ba sabay niya yun na nawala? Si Pingoy ba? Pingoy, Pingoy, Pingoy. Pingoy. Yung, Pingoy. yung Pingoy was starting in the early first round and then Matt Nieto just took over the role <laughs> because exactly. he was so steady. Yeah, so I don't know. We have another rookie Nieto. We have another point guard spot available. You never know, di ba? Maybe later Mag- on magulat. in the season. Mag- Iba- magulat Nieto. itong si Nieto. So we, we never know. Okay. Next, next, and and sorry, just something I want to point out, no? Maui, credit to you, kudos to you, because I remember ma- a month ago or a couple of podcast episodes before, uh, you mentioned, sabi mo, nagtataka ka bakit Ateneo keeps joining all these local leagues, all these local competitions, it's something that they haven't really done before, especially under Coach Tab. And sabi mo, back then, it's probably because they have a lot of Phil Foreign uh, recruits and Coach Tab is probably getting them acclimated to local leagues, local competition, and the physicality of Pinoy-style basketball. And I think in a recent interview with Coach Tab, more or less, he said the exact same thing. So, either ang galing ni Maui na predict niya yung naiisip ni Coach Tab or Coach Tab is watching Boleros, which I think is the correct answer here. No, I think Coach Tab is watching Boleros na nakit- napanood niya si Maui, sabi niya, oh, ano, that's why I need to join more competition. So, Maui, either way, I think you're a genius. Diba? Either way, genius ka, Maui. But... But but to that point, I just I, I brought that up because I wanted to say, if you look at the way these guards, the guards that you listed, Espinosa, Brown, even Gomez, Nieto, and you look at how they were playing two months ago when we were talking about that panic, is it time to panic for Ateneo? And how they're playing now, malayo. Would you say like medyo malayo yung difference in terms of? Yeah. Um, how steady they are now, how confident they are. Especially, I remember we were talking about Nieto. He initially looked lost, but now he looks a lot more confident, a lot more steady. He's, his shots are going in. Um, so, so I think it really helped. No? May kita mo, I think kahapon, Gab, I, I, napanood mo yung game kahapon against um, sina Gerald Anderson. Uh, it was a very physical game then, di ba? Would you say, um, ano ba yung yes, mga ni very Bernard? physical. So, ilang beses na Especially, agawan. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You even against CSB the two days ago, you know, <laughs> they took so many shots against Ateneo. Uh, shots, not literal shots, but shots. <laughs> and... Ay, si Eric, salamat, di ba? <laughs> oh, oh, Eric, salamat. Eric, exactly. Eric, <laughs> Hello, Atinista. So, yeah, may so, kita mo yung physicality talaga ng game. Man. And I think it's good that ano, Ateneo's getting used to that type of physical basketball game. Last question, because we've spent a lot of time on Ateneo, and you kind of answered this already. So how does this affect Ateneo's chances of winning? Would you... So, parang na-mention ni Gab kanina, would you put them a tier below UP? And I would, uh, yeah. Okay, and then in relation to the other teams, how would you rank them now? Or tier them, at least? 
Maui. Oh, there's definitely definitely still top two for me, ah, but I'm top two. Up, I still top think, two up in. Yeah, but I still think UP has the edge right now. Uh, they well, not a complete lineup, but they have you know continuity sort of with yung with regards to their main guys, except for Carl Tamayo and the other front court, but. Their backcourt is still pretty solid. They're pretty deep, di ba? Sobrang stack ng UP. So, I, I'll give UP a slight edge over Ateneo for, for now. Maui, ikaw? Yeah, I think I would have to agree with Gab. I think Ateneo's, Ateneo and UP was on another tier. Kasi Lasal still has to prove that they can really be consistent. Um... But now I think Ateneo's one tier down and then probably NU and Lasal another tier down also. But uh UP is again the favorite. They I think the unanimous favorite this this preseason. Uh Gab mentioned yung stability ng lineup nila. I think it really boils down to having that same big man and same point guard. I think having JD Kagulangan come back is does wonders for UP. Having Alarcon still play the shooting guard slot and playing on another level this offseason just solidified themselves as the probably favorite to win the title next season. But it's a long way to go. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll see another dark horse team or maybe Ateneo and Lasal will will prevail. Or Enyo, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Lagot kayo sa Lasal at Enyo. So... Ateneo pa rin number two nyo. I think I think it's much closer now. Like Enyo and Ateneo specifically, I think is a lot closer now. Um, I would put Lasal up there also, but to Maui's point, but pa tayo. Like we haven't really seen Lasal perform in the UAAP, de ba? Like they had a lot of changes also this season, so uh, hard to really uh, say where how the, well they'll perform. Pero USD, I think for me, Ateneo. To be fair, diba? UST nga, hindi pa natin nakikita. But speaking of top four, merong isang team, Adamson, made it to the final four last season. And ever since the end of the season, we kept saying, Uy, Adamson, they can still potentially make it to the final four because they have a more or less intact team. And they have the returning, and they got Jerome Lastimosa back. Now that's that doesn't seem to be the case because Adamson just lost three players in their rotation from last season. Although let's say two key players, they lost Duanga, AP Manlapas, and Flowers. So, so according to the news, Duanga uh, will not play his final year because he did not make the school's academic cut and the league's. Uh, minimum requirement. Now, si Manlapas and si Flowers supposedly just left. So, Manlapas went to EAC, Flowers went back to the US. Dun sa tatlo, we can say that Duanga and Manlapas are probably the, are probably like starters or the key players that they would lose, di ba? Um, Flowers, more of a uh, backup player. So, my question to you, which ones, who is the bigger loss for Adamson? Duanga or Manlapas? Gab? Uh, for, for me, for me, it's Duanga. Oh, well, big, literally. And also, he's the guy uh, towards the end of last season who showed a lot of promise, I think, as a secondary mm-hmm. option in the offense to Jerome Lastimosa. Because he developed uh, in the final four, the we were saying the game, uh, the game changed when Lena Duanga started hitting three point shots consistently Please. because Ange Kwame start, started to uh, guard him outside and it left the paint unguarded. It, 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 it was only when they s- switched up and put Kai Balungay on Duanga so that Ange Kwame could patrol the paint that the game eventually changed and Atene won. So yeah, sayang, no? I saw a lot of development kay Duanga. Uh, I thought he was going to have a good final year for for Adamson. But again, bittersweet. 
kung taga Adams din ka, mawawala, mawawala sila yung Daduanga and sila Manlapas and Flowers. Pero sweet uh, that Adamson is still upholding the mantra of being a student athlete. Probably the only other school, I, I haven't heard any other school aside from Ateneo and Adamson <laughs> uh, suspending players because of academic pro- probation. So at least, no, Adamson is consistent. Uh, they, they're strict about their academics. So kudos to them. For AP Manlapas, Again, no, towards the end of the season in season 85, showed a lot of promise. Showed the promise he finally was uh, capable of, right? He was always nagged by injuries. And then, ah, uh, sakit transferring to the NCAA. I don't know why, though. Uh, I thought that he had a spot in the rotation, so I don't know why he transferred. Uh, it wasn't really clear uh, why he left Adamson, but yeah, and sakit. I, uh, with the loss of these three players, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, surprised if uh, Adamson is far from final four contention. Uh, and it makes the decision by Jerome Lastimosa to stay in Adamson a lot Aray. more. Uh, yeah, it's a, lot, it's a lot more painful for Jerome because you know he wanted to bring a title to Adamson. That was his press release, the right? why he wanted to stay. Now it's a highly unlikely that he's gonna get that or even make the final four. I don't think he's gonna make it. Uh, so yeah, um, sakit, sakit for Adamson. Um, they you they were on the rise, no? Uh, but we'll see. There might be other players there who will surprise us. Maui. Yeah, I think I think I agree with Gab that you you losing leg like Doanga was. It's a pretty big blow. Just not just because of his contributions as an offensive player in developing. I think it's really about him match him matching up with the other foreign student athletes also. Most of the teams will have a foreign student athlete, even UE, who did not have a foreign student athlete last season, will have a foreign student athlete. And not having that guy, that steady foreign student athlete, an experienced student athlete, such as Lena Doanga, will be a big blow to Adamson. I'm not sure if Adamson has a reserve foreign student athlete, but if they don't have a, a reserve Meron foreign daw. They do, yeah, they, they do. do. According they to have, tiebreaker, kay Matthew at, Lee. At, at least they have a, a backup, but but then again, I don't know if, if that would be sufficient. Um, Adamson yeah. has not made a lot of noise this offseason, despite joining the preseason tournaments. And to me, it's very concerning because there were they should be a team that should be dominating this offseason because they have a very uh they they they, they have an intact lineup from last season. Uh, I think Jerome missed a few games there naman so so baka diyon. But uh on the other hand losing Manlapas is also a big blow for me just because Manlapas is their ceiling raiser. He's the type of player that can raise this team from probably I agree. Uh, Final four contender to a potential final finalist to UAP. And losing him also is a very big blow. I don't know how Jerome Lastimosa will carry the, all the scoring load sa, sa Adamson next season. And now he has to pair up with a new foreign student athlete. But I'm not surprised that a player such as Manlapas decided to transfer to EAC. Just because I think that he will get more opportunity there. Uh, probably he saw some of the players from UAAP transfer to the NCA and they were really doing well. Uh, one one potential example for next season also is the RC Kalimag. If you watch you one of the, his games sa Pinoy Liga, I think, or sa Phil Oil, he scored 43 points against UP. So imagine a player not even playing in the UAAP, a player that UP did not even prioritize, score that much points, that get that much usage. When he transferred to a big team also, like San Beda. So I think AP Malapas is probably betting on himself and uh, just really wanted to get more opportunities. It's just sad because he's one of my favorite players in the UAP. If you watch the episodes namin before, I was very excited that he was finally getting his chances. I agree, Mao. Actually, you, that was my first point. Uh so I know in terms of 
current contribution, Duanga has the bigger contribution, literally. Average 10 points. He was the uh, team, he led the team in rebounds. Uh, and to, to your point, Gab, I really wanted to see a full season of Duanga hitting that three-point shot consistently. Because we only saw that probably second half of the season or actually final four na lang ata siya talagang ano, last few games and final four. That's when he became yep. like a consistent three-point shooter. Except that game tying three-point shot against Lasal, no? like in the middle of the season. But my first point, I, I wanted to pick AP Manlapas as the big bigger loss. And my reason for that is what Maui said. Um, I think AP has a higher ceiling and can really like lift the team. Uh, he's more like the X factor. I think Duanga is going to be solid. He's going to be a reliable presence for Adamson. But I think Manlapas really take, can take the team to the next level. We talked about um, NU figuring out how to take the team to the next level. I think AP Manlapas can be that guy for Adamson, which is why I think he's a big loss. Second, we all know it's Duanga's final year. He's 24 years old. It's his final year of eligibility. But AP Manlapas, I think because of injuries, is still eligible for three years. Two or three years. Uh, I'm not sure according to the article, three years. So he could have been the transition phase after Jerome Lastimosa. So who could be the face? Like he could be the face of Adamson after Lastimosa leaves. That's why, like for me, short term and long term, actually, I would pick AP Manlapas, but more on the potential of Manlapas. But I agree, like Duanga, in terms of his impact and actual contributions to the team. If you're looking at his performance last season and the way he developed that three at the end of the season, definitely a huge, huge loss for. Adamson. So Gab, nunahan mo na naman ako. My second question was about Jerome Lastimosa. So let me change it a bit. Let me change it a bit. Ito. If you're Jerome Lastimosa and you hear this and you see this news, do you just back out of your final season and go pro? Ooh, wow! Grabe ka naman, Sam. Sabihin mo na lang. Diba? I mean, this is not the team that you expected, di ba? I mean, kausapin mo nang maayo si Coach Nash. I think you know my answer to this one. He should go, he should go pro already. He's old. Yeah. And sayang, sayang yung earning potential niya, no? Um, ako, kahit nga sa akin, even if Without all of these departures, he should have left Adamson already. I mean, he was already given a freaking standing ovation when they got eliminated. <laughs> he was crying into their towel. Nakaakbay na si Coach Nash sa kanya. Tapos bigla sasabihin niya, oh, I'm staying. He had the perfect send-off. <laughs> so, he brought the team uh, to the Final Four? Oh, Sayang, ang ganda na eh. Ang ganda na nung, nung send-off niya eh. Ang ganda na nung last memory ng Adamson fans sa kanya eh. So now, the, the, the last memory of Adamson fans sa kanya, hindi man lang sila mag-final. Well, possibly, no, given the strength of their lineup. We don't know. Hindi, we don't hindi know. sila mag-final four. So, yeah, I think for Jerome, it's not too late. I, I mean, the B-League is still in its off-season, I think, right? So maybe there's time to get a contract there. Uh, the KBL, I think, is still in the off-season. So uh, there is time to get a contract, uh, get a good agent, get yourself a contract somewhere, play, uh, maximize your youth and your earning potential. Ako, kung, if I was Jerome, go pro already. I'm sure Maui agrees. I, yung, I would be surprised if Maui disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I agree with, with Gab. I think we, we had an episode where we, where we talked about Jerome Lastimosa extensively nung, nung end of season. And I think mm -hmm. it's a crazy off-season. It's an even crazier off-season for Adamson and Jerome Lastimosa. And I think he should have really decided to go. I'm not sure if, if, if still has time to 
to not go to not play next season uh it's very disheartening for him i, I think uh it's crazy but but hopefully i think there are rumors that there's a uab players just going to play out the season then he has a contract in in kbl so it probably it could be jerome but but it's could disheartening it, it's di- disheartening for me to see na na baka maging from from the very graceful exit might be very disgusting this coming season i mean all the uaab teams have stuck stacked up i think no team has not gotten stronger with this crazy off season um and adamson was really playing on 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 the consistency of their lineup and the stability of their guys because they were a very intact lineup much like a new but but right now it's gonna be a very big problem and it's gonna be a very big hurdle for them they haven't made any noise in the off season so so i'm not sure what if coach nash has a uh, magic in his bag left uh, the, he has two months we'll see but I think big blow din kay Jerome kasi probably if he didn't go pro if he didn't play in the UAP baka yung spot ni, ni Oxon from CSB he could have gotten that slot I mean I don't know maybe but but it's crazy it's crazy how this off season has been a very crazy off season from, from all the off seasons We've been saying this. It's it's like no other. It's 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 not it's not like a normal UAP off season. This off season. So we'll see. Maybe in the next two months, may mga paputok pa. Correct. Ang hirap din no na with all these departures, you would assume that Adamson and Coach Nash would try to rebuild. No, parang get some young players in. Yung develop more young guys. But yung nga, if Jerome comes back, you're still trying to compete. You're still trying to win. Uh, you're still trying to make to make the finals. And there's no room for rebuilding for, yung, yung for development if if Jerome's gonna play. Because you know what? he's gonna get a lot of usage. Uh, they're gonna try to win as much games as possible. Uh, it doesn't make sense for Jerome to, to continue you with this last playing year, yeah. Does it make sense? Actually, that's a good point, no, Gab. And now that I think about it, it itong losing, losing Duanga, Manlapas, and Flowers, it affects Adamson not just in this season, but it also affects them in the next few seasons. Because you were coming in this season expecting that probably these guys would make the team. Like, for sure, Duanga and Manlapas Flowers, let's just say he makes the team, right? Because he was there. He was part of the team last season. And now, what? We're two months away from the start of the season and suddenly you you, you lose three players from your rotation or from your team. Hindi ka naman makakahanap ng super talented player within two months that you can sort of integrate into your team, ba? Right? I mean, all the... The recruitment happens like a year before. You recruit guys this year so that they can play in the next season. So it's really going to be next man up literally for Adamson because they probably already have a roster or a pool of players set. And now they lose like two, at least two very, very crucial players. So uh, it's it's going to be harder for Coach Nash to sort of form this team or build this team uh, into a very competitive team just like how they were last season. Um, and before magalit yung mga Adamson fans dyan or uh, uh, Jerome Lastimosa fans, I'm not, hindi ko naman sinasabing umalis si Jerome. Ha? Like, I, you know, si Gab is one of the biggest fans of Lastimosa. Uh, we all love watching... Uh, Jerome Lastimosa play. Naiyak nga kami during his last game against Ateneo eh, kasi it was very touching. We were gonna miss him. But at the end of the day, uh, he wanted to come back to compete. And now, you know, we, we can assume na they're, they're, going to, they're not going to be as competitive as we expected them to be. So, maybe Jerome is having doubts. And, you know, should he consider leaving? That was the question. Again, we're not forcing him to leave. It's up to him. Um, 
it's just it really changes no the dynamics of the team now that they lose Duanga and Manlapas. Um any any last words from the two of you before we end? Gab. Uh it hurts for these two schools. Yung lumiit yung mga bird. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Gabriel. <laughs> Ako, ano, masasabi ko lang, mag, madami pa sanang pasabog padating. It's crazy this off-season, yun lang. Okay. Let's end it with that. But before we go, public advisory, public service advisory to all the future student athletes, especially for Adamson and Ateneo. Mag-aral kayong mabuti para hindi kayong makat sa team. Okay, sinasabi ko na, Portsky, 30 na tatanggal. So mag-aral kayong mabuti. Um, that's it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed that discussion. If you haven't, please don't forget to subscribe and share the Boleros YouTube page so that we can get to 1,000 likes. Thank you for all the comments, the suggestions, all the engagement on our page. We really appreciate it. Uh, see you again next time. See you. Bye-bye.